Today we're going to talk about transformers and transformers are things that can be used to change the voltage and the current in a flowing wire and it looks like this so let's take a look a simple transformer consists of a primary coil which is shown here and that's where the current comes in initially and it has np turns right let's say that um wound on an iron core placed next to a separate secondary coil with ns turns it can be arranged as shown or with different cores, even wound on top of one another. But the important thing is that there is no electrical connection between the primary and secondary coil. However, if you put a current in here, a current comes out of here. So how does that happen? Well, the potential difference in the primary coil, it causes an alternating current, IP, to flow. And this creates an alternating magnetic field. Field, magnified by the iron core because the iron core will also get magnetized and it will add to the magnetic field. Um, so it's changing magnetic flux cuts across the secondary coil and this is important vocabulary to memorize. This induces an alternating electromotive force in it in the secondary coil and hence the alternating current IS. So that's the theory behind a transformer but why shall we you know, put the wires through this. Why not just let them flow in a line? Well, that's because you can change the the amount of voltage that is in the primary coil, the voltage in the primary coil versus the voltage in the secondary coil. And we can alter this by using the number of turns wound on each coil. Because if you remember from electromagnetic induction, you you know Induced electromotive force is equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux over time. And this is actually affected by the number of turns on the coil. And so if we change this, we can change the electromotive force. So step-up transformer is one that has more turns in the secondary coil than on the primary coil, and hence has a higher output voltage than the input voltage. We know that if this is bigger, then this is going to be bigger. So let's say the secondary coil has a bigger end than the primary coil. Then the electromotive force, aka the alternating voltage within the secondary coil will be larger than the primary coil. And so we're kind of like making it bigger, right? From beginning to end of the transformer, we are making the voltage bigger. So this is a step-up transformer. You have to also understand that the step-up transformer is talking about stepping up the voltage and not the current or the power. So we can remember Faraday's law, as I've said before, for induced EMF, we get E is this equation. So if you increase the number of turns, then you also increase induced EMF. And also remember that phi equals to magnetic flux, which is also equal to the magnetic flux density times the area perpendicular to the flux lines. So N, the number of turns on a coil varies with the EMF in directly proportional to it as you can see, and hence a higher number of coils will give a higher electromotive force than the primary coil. This direct proportionality leads to the turns ratio equation. Because we know that this is actually um, directly proportional, we can use ratios to calculate the voltage in the primary coil versus the voltage in the secondary coil. So how we do this is let's take a look at this one right here. In this transformer, this is the primary coil, so it has a primary alternating voltage in it. And then this is the secondary coil that has a secondary alternating voltage across it. We see that this one has three turns around it, and this one has one, two, three, four, five, six turns around it. So we can time this over here. So because, let's say the, the initial voltage across the current was actually, let's say the alternating voltage had a VO of 2, 2 volts. Then we know that the VRMS will be 2 over square root 2, which gives us 1.414. So... We, th we know that this is going to be bigger when it goes over to the secondary coil. So when it does go over, the VRMS is going to be the double of this, which equals to 2.818. Or it can also be that the maximum of this equals to 
4 volts. It's the same thing, but you will have to say that this is VO and not VRMS. And so if that makes sense to you, then we can summarize this with a, a, an equation. And this is the turns ratio equation. The ratio of the secondary coil and the primary coil equals to the voltage in either of them. And this makes perfect sense to me. Since in the secondary coil we have six coils, oh, in the secondary coil we have six coils, and in the primary coil we have three coils, and we're trying to find the alternating voltage in the secondary coil in ratio to the primary coil, we know that the primary coil has a voltage of two volts. And so the secondary coil, if you times it together, this is going to cancel out to become 2 equals 2 times 2 equals to 4. So this is the turns ratio equation. Alternately, a transformer with fewer turns on the secondary coil than on the primary coil, sorry, mistake here, primary coil, is described as a step-down transformer. It lowers the voltage at the primary coil. And you can also use the turns ratio equation for this. So it might strike you as a little bit odd that you can just increase the voltage out of nowhere. Because where is that energy coming from? So we have to account for energy preservation. The conservation, uh, the principle of conservation of energy still holds in this situation. There is no energy lost. Assuming that no heat or sound or light energy or any other forms of dissipation of energy is dissipated, the power in the primary and secondary coils must remain the same or not. Energy will be created out of nothing or lost into nowhere. So we know that power of the primary coil equals the power of the secondary coil. However, we know that P equals IV. The power, the, the current of the primary coil and the current of the, the voltage of the primary coil multiplied together equals that of the secondary coil. So if you rearrange this, you get Vs over Vp is Ip over Is. This also means that the ratio of the voltages is the inverse of the ratio of the current. In other words, if the voltage is stepped up, the current is stepped down. If the current is stepped up, the voltage is stepped down. And so this is how it works. You cannot create power or energy out of nowhere. So if you are going to increase the voltage, the current will have to decrease so that energy is not just suddenly conjured up. If you decrease the voltage, the current will also be increased so that energy is not magically just lost into nowhere. So now we've accounted for energy preservation, I want to account for energy losses. Energy can also be lost due to the resistance of the transformer coil windings. Um, the changing magnetic flux would also induce eddy currents within the core heating up, heating it up due to its resistance. And you can reduce this by lamination. So we know that a core, like a core kind of looks like this, and there are coils around it. The ways in which energy is lost in this configuration is, first of all, there is resistance within the coils itself. Second of all, you're going to have alternating magnetic fields, but that's not only going to create a magnetic field or an, an induced EMF in the next coil, it's also going to create an induced EMF in this huge, huge like metal core, right? It's also a conductor. And what t t tends to happen is that they form these circular currents and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you have a high current, you have a high amount of heating. And so you can actually lose a lot of energy due to um, the heat dissipation. You can also reduce this by lamination. What this means is, imagine if you decided to chop up the iron core to separate plates like this. You chop it off and then you put something like an insulator over each of them. This reduces the amount of eddy currents that can flow through it. However, it still allows the core to exist and assist in intensifying the magnetic flux, the changing magnetic flux. So that's how we account for energy losses. And that's it for transformers. Hope this was useful and thank you for watching.